as a joint meeting, you have to call your subcommittee to order, and I call mine. Okay. Okay, so I'll call Jen Gelb to order. All those present? Uh, uh, Ms. Shea? Present. Ms. Clements? Present. Council Ryan? Present. Council Rivas? Present. And I'm still here? Okay. All right, I'll call my meeting to order. And uh, um, Councilor Steves? Present. Here. Councilor Dallas? Here. Yeah. I'm here. Citizen Spring? Citizen Laza? And for all of you, I have to <laughs> I mean, I get to yeah, I don't know. If you, I don't think you get to vote twice. I know, I know. It's a joint. It's a really weird one. It, it is kind of weird. We've never done this before. So. That's one of the reasons why things like that happen. So, okay. Anyway, so um, we, as we decided to do this as a joint meeting, primarily because although it's a DPW issue. We're looking at it as a town policy slash bylaw. I'm not quite sure I understand what this is defined as, whether it's a policy, a bylaw, or what. Any, uh, any in, comments on that? In my have? interpretation, it's the uh, restrictions that are placed on drain layers. Mm -hmm. uh, and is so it? it's not, I don't know that it's necessarily a regulation even. Uh, it's the requirements that we put on our drain layers uh, for them to do work in, in mm -hmm. well, on drain layers, so this isn't, is this street opening for all utility people, or is this specific to one thing? Yes. Um, yeah. The, it's the restrictions that are placed on uh, anybody uh, filing a street opening permit. Okay, good. And good. street opening permits, uh, in my opinion, should only be issued to drain layers. Okay. okay. Is there a legal definition of drain layer? It's somebody that has a drain layers license with the county. One, one thing I noticed in the documents here is that it says it says both permit and license, but it doesn't clearly define which is which. I would assume that the license is the annual license they, they have to do things anywhere in town for them. Whereas the permit is for a specific project. Yes, sir. That is true. Okay. okay. So in that case, then I would think that we need to clearly delineate that because that's not stated in the of the that clear distinction. And because it's several in several places it talks about the potential to revoke this license. I mean, is there a situation where you would revoke a permit but not a license? Because if you revoke a license, they can't do any business in town with the deal. Or for some other extended period, because I would personally love to see language in there that says something to the effect of, um, and uh, like, for example, where it says, failure to install a permanent patch after six months shall result in revocation of this license. And I would add, and automatic denial of future licenses for some number of years. Which, whatever we can figure out. Yeah, we're not giving them a license. Don't they get their license from the state? No, we have a license. Really? License to something? Yeah, I would think it's a license. I mean, is there a state license for these people as well? Okay, yeah. Okay, we have a whole bunch of hands on this, so I'm in order here. I saw Derek first, so go ahead. So, Matt, you just said that you need a drain lane license to open a street. Mm -hmm. What if I'm only doing electrical on Right, yeah. Or cable. Or cable. That's, we've always, in order to excavate in the public way, we've always required drain layers licenses. The only exception to that has been the big utilities, which were at one time licensed, but are no longer. Why not? That's wrong. Other communities have other rules, and I've argued that I agree, and, uh, and if I was uh, going to be here in the next calendar year, I would require National Grid or their subcontractors uh, to uh, get drain layers license in order to do work. In and, and, absolutely. And that's absolutely, absolutely. But like I said, electrical and cable have nothing to do with drain layers. It's what we call it. If we want to change the name of it, then that's up uh, to this is be a longer you guys and the next uh, and the next QPW director. Okay. Mm -hmm. sure. Matt, uh, looking at the town's website and getting looking at that uh, rule and regulation. It clearly states the Department of Public Work has the authority to do 
do this. What I see in the regulations is a lack of enforcement uh, to the people that violate the law as far as the dollar signs or something like that. Uh, you also list the drain line is that make application every year and there's a lot of people that go open the streets that aren't on that list. So how do you enforce it? For those people that just decide they're going to put a, a water line into a house or, or yeah, something like that. A I, think there should be, I think there should be a fine schedule. Mm -hmm. um, but also if, if there's any sort of material damages to the town, uh, they should be invoiced for those and not uh, and not given any additional permits or have their license revoked until, uh, or suspended until uh, they pay those off. Correct, and then the other, the other thing that happens is like, I, I know it says 24 hour notice to the DPW, but it seems like that 24 hour notice doesn't happen on the weekends. They just decide to come and open the hole up on the weekend. I think a regulation should also state in there that in the event of an opening after hours, business hours of the community, that it will be the responsibility of the person opening that hole to pay. Let's say you have the DPW has to go out there and they're there for four hours. That contractor should be responsible uh, to the town cost mm -hmm. in, in, in their permit. And then, and I don't, I don't know how you enforce it. I mean, you're not going to ride around during the day off. Like, nobody expects that to happen. Yeah, but yeah. it happens often where after hours, and they call it an emergency. But they still are required to notify the DPW that they're doing this. Now, I know in the past, National Grid or NUCO has called Heather and said, listen, we've got a hole, we've got to open up, we're doing it. But with no fine schedule uh, and no enforcement, and no oversight, I, I mean, there's only so much you as an individual can do sure. for people in there. Mm -hmm. And with, without having that, that's why these companies come into town and basically do what they want. I mean, you, you spoke at a meeting that it's new cocaine down and just cut into the new pavement on Main Street, and you had no knowledge of it until you were either coming to work or something. Right. So I think that's where the bylaw needs to have Enforcement and teeth. I agree. Hmm, I, agree. I think that's why we're talking about this in, in right. the first place because it doesn't happen. It does. it okay, we have a whole bunch of hands up. I've seen, I've seen Steve's, I've seen Eric, I saw Scott's earlier, I saw Mike's. So I think I saw Mike's first. Okay. All right. Um, the reason that we wanted to have this joint meeting tonight is because we have a lack of a bylaw. Right. In fact, I went on the town's website to look at our, our bylaw and we only have one. Regulation of digging in public ways, and there's nothing there <clears throat> talking about fees or fines or anything else. So that's why we wanted to have this meeting because we want to develop some some bylaw, or at the very least, put some teeth put some teeth into the regulation. I've I've looked at other towns, and I don't like comparing Southbridge to other towns all the time, but I have looked at other towns. They have a fee schedule, two hundred and fifty dollars. You want to get that? They have a fine schedule, so and, and they're also they also mention Jackie's law, which is the state's trench bylaw. Right. We don't even mention that in our regulations or it is mentioned. It's mentioned. Well, it is. Yes. Yeah. So the thing, the other thing is, for instance, I highlighted a few things. All edges shall be cut straight and neat. Have you been on Edward Street? <laughs> it's not cut it's straight. Terrible. It's not cut straight. It's so terrible. why wasn't that enforced? And. That's why we well, need to see. They don't, they don't have a foot on either side of the trench either in one of those trenches. Right. That's why we need, yeah. we need some teeth in this, exactly. in this that's regulation, right. or we need to develop a bylaw. That's why we're looking to do That's right, that's uh, correct. And so absolutely. that's why I just, that's yeah. why it's, if somebody said, why are we having this tonight, what are we doing? This is what, this absolutely. is just the start. I know we're not going to finish it all tonight. But we wanted to get it started anyway because we need some teeth. And whatever we're going to do, and it's another example. I got a call last weekend from Mr. Lazo, actually, about a trench that was opened up on Charlton Street, and it was Friday. and it was yeah. open all weekend long, and somebody almost got killed. Almost got killed. Almost was, killed. That, was that the same trench you were referring to? I don't know. Yeah, I got 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 there. I almost got killed. Matter of fact, I took the combs from the guy's property and put them in the road because the rocks were like this all over the way. 
I, I saw them on the road. Right. I, didn't, I didn't realize it was completely open at the time. Monday, that Monday they passed me. Right here, it tells you immediately after opening, you got a cold patch. So I saw that. Yeah, they didn't no, do that. There, there's no cold patching. There's no oversight. It's all about it. It's all about it. It's all about it. There's no yes. oversight, really. No enforcement, oversight, fines. Yeah. That's what we want to get going. Exactly. Yeah. So well, we're we're and yeah. it's great talking about teeth, but there's no there's no head to put the teeth in right now. So <laughs> what? Unfortunately, that's true. Right? There's no what? No head to put the teeth in. Throws it out. Well, that's all we want. Yeah, but. If somebody does something, got something on paper, you can find them after the fact. You may not do something immediately. Would some, of these, would some of these fines be enforceable at this time? Well, that's why you find out who's doing what. Right. I mean, but certainly. No. I don't know if they could do it, but. I mean, that's the other thing. Because they see it. They want to enforce it. So, yeah, yeah. So, it's not going to be done before the person like that. It's not going to be done before the person kinds of people have to decide. If anybody reads this packet, it is pretty explicit on what the procedure is. If you want to go look at the procedure, I think we have a good procedure as is. The thing is, if somebody has to go for a permit, the biggest fine you can give a contractor is pull my license. You don't let me open up the streets. You lose a lot of money. And that's usually a big punishment if you do anything illegally in any town. And a lot of the other towns want to know where are your licenses? You need three licenses in different towns in order to get a license in some of the other towns. Or you have to show your experience. My thing is, this bylaw I thought was a good bylaw. It's very explicit on what you have to do. The problem is the oversight and the follow through. I know the gas company and the utilities, they high step the local government a lot. They call it an emergency. You don't want the gas line to blow up, so they can get over immediately. We have a bylaw that says you're not supposed to dig up a newly paved road. Boston, yeah, I say Boston, yeah. Mariko can come in, they open them all up. My thing is, as far as finding me, you're gonna, any fee system you put on, the homeowner's gonna suck it up when the contract gets done. Taking someone's license away is detrimental to their business. So I, I personally think that uh, when Matt says put teeth to it, I think the teeth are there. Nobody's doing anything about revoking the license. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Eric. Uh, is there a uh, bond requirement in the. Yes, uh, $7,500 bond. That's woefully inaccurate, in my opinion. Uh, there is a provision for, uh, for greater bonds. Uh, I believe on excavations over 100 feet in any direction. Yeah, that's the same thing. So, uh, but I've never, I mean, first of all, the um, the only times I think we've ever had an excavation over 100 feet has been gas companies since I've been here, and they don't, they're not bonded in the first place uh, with uh, under this regulation anyway. One. Because it was just never, it was never required. Was that a local thing? Let's not talk about it, just add it. Just add it. <laughs> On for the gas. Put it out. Yes. That's it. Make a list, people. Is that a motion? <laughs> no, you don't, you don't have a list. I <laughs> you. Yeah. This is like the ground floor. So, so to follow that up then, who, who does not currently apply bonds? Can we do it? National Grid and anybody that does work for them does not have a drain layers license. The light, the bond is required to get your license. They don't have a license. They don't have a bond. So then, so, so they, 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 they do apply so for a street of weak permits, but they don't. It's simple. I mean, that's part of the problem. But that, that unfortunately, the DPU laws allow the the giant. Uh, utilities basically run roughshod over the community, uh, which may be the issue. I'm not sure what the law actually says at that level. Uh, Eric? So, so to follow up with that, um, I gave Mike uh, several copies of uh, the town that I used to work in of mm -hmm. their excavation permit for excavation and roads, um, and they require a $20,000 bond okay. per opening. Um, 
regardless of size. And it works. The contractors pay. It's a charity bond. It's not, you know, it's not probably not worth much more than the paper it's written on, frankly, but at least it's there. Yeah. Um, and every there is a fee for every opening that's required. Um, and the insurance is required. And it's spelled out in there what the insurance is. Um, so all there is an insurance requirement. I'm sure there is. It's quite well. You know, we, we just always go for what we know and that's the thing that worked out quite well. Okay. Oops. This is what he gave me if anybody wants to know. Oh, great. Okay. Do you have yeah. a connection here, Eric? Yeah, I, I can have an issue. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, it's a, well, do you have one? Well, I don't, I want to see whoever needs it. Yeah, I'm going to have five minutes. Oh, okay. So, Dallas and... Oh, I thought that. Is that Johnny, yeah, this is our local. Mr. Dow has a question. Yeah, he's been very patient. Mr. Chair, if you want to just recognize the community for competition. Good. Thank you. I think our biggest issue is the, the big utility company. That's our, our main issue right now. The small uh, contractor. I don't see. Uh, I, I think we have control of the small contractor, but our big issue is the utility company. Usually. They come, dig, and they leave. Uh, Mm -hmm. Nobody check, they don't impact correct, they don't uh, do the right thing, they don't put the right material, and like Matt say, no license, no, I don't know if they need a permit either. But. So that's our big issue. I think we need to focus on a big company more. Mostly, I, I agree with you, clearly. Yeah. Although I think the issue that you raised, Kevin, about the place in Charleston Street was not one of the big companies. Right. 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 That's the problem. But that's that's that. But, so so we have an issue in both cases. Although the, but, the national grid is definitely the worst issue. I I believe a long time ago, if the contractor don't follow the rule, they wouldn't issue a license. He wouldn't be allowed to work in the town. I agree. They should be. But the utility company, nobody enforce anything on them. They come, they destroy mm -hmm. and leave, and they can come back anytime they want. Mm -hmm. you know? So unfortunately, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that is the problem. Okay. I think Steve, you had your hand. No, I got to talk. Uh, Mike brought it up. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Kurt. So just um, as a subcontractor for the big utility companies, National Grid being one of them, um, whenever my crews were put on a job site within any towns, they received a copy of this before any excavation was done, mm -hmm. um, specifically regarding open trenches and what the requirements were for put back. Um, <clears throat> I, as a subcontractor, either foreman, labor operator, doesn't matter, I am required by National Gas Association to obtain what they call OQs, operator qualifications. Some of those operator qualifications do include um, open trenching, backfilling. Um, you have to be certified to do that. So the big companies, National Grid, I'm just going to use National Grid for example, they may not have a drain layers license for the cities or towns that they work in. They do follow National Gas Association standards when it comes to or they're supposed to follow National Gas Association standards when it comes to backfilling, when it comes to installing tracer wire, when it comes to putting a shovel into a gas well. Um, there, I'm certified in over 50 NGA certifications, and if you look at the Eversource side of it, they go above and beyond, which is called Energy World Net, and I have to be qualified in those as well. Um, and that's just the work for those subcontractors. There's supposed to be oversight on the subcontractors from big dogs. National grid. They should have a person there watching the subcontract and making sure that this is done correctly. Um, RH White, I'm not going to just put that name out, but that's who I used to work for. We have been pulled out of different towns because of this specifically. And it was on a recommendation from the town saying that they did not want that contractor back. So if this is a problem with some of the subcontractors that are working for the big dogs, it needs to be addressed to, to National Grid that. You're having an issue with the subcontractor not following the standards, but they need to have the standards in their hand prior to opening a, a hole. Anytime I work in any uh, town, in any of their um, DPW or any of their utilities, I always had to meet with somebody from the DPW on the job site to do a walkthrough. That would include right-of-ways, that would include line assignments, that would include all that stuff that had to be done with DPW, with National Grid, with the subcontractor putting in the utility. Um, and one of the first things that subcon or excuse me, that DPW or DPU, Department of Public Utilities, depending on what town you worked in, the first thing they did was hand you this, and the expectation was it was follow the standard. So that's not being done, I would assume. 
in that, I don't know if you can answer this, do the subcontractors receive a copy of this before any excavation is done? I doubt that you know it. Of? I doubt it. So each one of their foreman should have one of these on their truck before any kind of service work is done in the town. Okay. That's kind of first and foremost, because if they don't know what they're supposed to do, they're not going to do it. Okay. Okay. I think they don't respect the town. That's what they're being doing. They go in, they stop on everybody, and nobody is punching them. That's why they keep doing it. Nobody's stopping them, say, listen, one, two, three, you can follow that rule or get out. So I think they don't care. Nobody after them, nobody check on them, nobody uh, give them fine, nobody stop them from work, so why not? I keep doing what I'm doing. As well as nobody cares. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Um, thank you. That's so uh, numerous years ago, when I was first a counselor, I had a number of businesses, not even people who actually lived there, business people saying to me, what is with the roads? What is with the roads? Why don't we make them do like other communities? We make them pay half the road, not just a portion of the road. Yeah. And, and at the time, our DPW director um, had said to me, she said, you know, look, this is, this is what we have. We say it's only, you only have to do so many feet out, only so many feet around here. I said, but yes, but once you've gone down our roads and you've seen all the holes they've done over the years, it's the entire road that's dug up. So we would have these arguments on a regular basis or at discussions, not arguments, discussions as to how can we change this, but it always seemed like you couldn't. But as time went on, I continually questioned because I would see other communities and other places getting half done. And I'm going to be truly, like, really forceful on this. Before I left here, one of the big things was watching National Grid cut up all the gas, all the holes that were happening on Dresser and everywhere. And I said, I hope you're going to make them do the paving. You're going to make. And finally, it was like, well, yeah. And then when it came to Main Street, and they were digging, I'm like, please tell me you're going to make them pay for Main Street. They have destroyed our community. And that they went to that. They made them give whatever X amount of dollars towards the new paving. We're going to wait on Main because we're going to let them do it. They're going to give us all this money. And it was about time to get something. The point being, to, to, to Councilor Dow, which is something I was going to say, it's not anybody's fault but ours. Mm -hmm. It is the town of Southbridge's fault for lack of us standing up for ourselves, as usual. Once again, Southbridge says, sure, come in, dig up our roads. We don't have any rules to tell you not to do anything other than that. Even if we do, we don't make you follow them. So don't worry about it. So I think it's a, the, yes, you need to put it in writing. It needs to be documented. All the suggestions are, are fantastic to get it to where it needs to be. But ultimately, over, if you don't enforce it, then it's not going to make a difference. We're going to be doing this five years from now, ten years from now. But I, I certainly hope that you come up with a half-road plan. I'm not sure on Everett. I'd be curious. That's a whole other subject. We'll stay off of that this month. But I certainly hope we enforce that. And they're going to pay the entire Everett because Everett has been a disaster all through the winter, too, yeah. for those poor people. But um, so, yeah, I agree. that, uh, And I think that the main way to get about this, you've got this, you've got this document. That's wonderful. But I think it's a, it's a DBW subcommittee situation where they need to go through section by section. Everybody should, should come together and make lists of what they see as issues and discuss and, and literally go piece by piece as to what you want. What does, this is like moot. What do we want it to look like? Yeah. This, this yeah. is our, all right, say not moot. It's, it's a base. That's nice. But is it relevant to now, today, to the future? Everybody, you all have great experiences, great information, great knowledge. So you need to take the time to individually look at it, come back with your data, go through it again. Review. Don't be afraid. Yeah, we don't want to compare to every other town, but don't be afraid to, again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, as I like to say, but grab a bunch of them, put them together, and say, wait a minute, you can do, they're doing that? How come we didn't ask for that? Oh, they didn't do enough, you know, or something. And compile what is in the best interest of Southbridge to all your knowledges, because you, there's a lot of knowledge on this DPW right now, and beyond. So I would say, you know, we can all sit around and say, we should do this and we should do that. But the reality is, until you have some concrete data in front of you and put it on paper, you're, you're spending your time, of course, but, and it's always good to talk. But on that note, I do have to leave. Um, so thanks for listening to me. I look for, I, I hope to, to be able to listen to some of the things you're going to put in place to make people accountable. The fees, mm -hmm. the, the fines, the bonds, and the insurance. I love all that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> it all sounds like money. We have been leaving revenue on the table or on the streets. We've been putting the dirt over it, for goodness sake. I didn't realize we don't charge fees for all the stuff that everybody else does. I and I know sometimes the homeowners get stuck with a private issue. But we're also talking bigger issues, bigger trenches. Trenches, most times roads get opened by 
bigger than just homeowners, and that's when those utilities and all need to pay. They've got money, they should pay. The cables of the world, the spectrums, the, the, the national grids, all of them. So they need to, they need to pay. <laughs> So, um, you know, and I think, frankly, the state should be enforcing um, oversight to, to, to utilities that dig up roads like they've done in our community. But unfortunately, we have allowed it. But when it's not what we would have allowed, then the state should come and help a community to get back from the, the utility should be made to, to um, provide for what they dug up. And uh, so that's on a state level, which I have mentioned occasionally to state people. But, but we're going to start here, respecting our community first. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, I can't wait. So I agree with um, what Denise is saying. Um, okay. But um, my question is, who is enforcing this? Is it the DPW director? Is that it? Well, permits get issued. All that. There's all those layers. Um, yeah. And that is a question. That's why. That's why I think you mentioned earlier whether or not we can have the police department in force or not. I don't know. That's something we need to look at. Can you? Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've had a few hands pop up. So uh, let's see. George, I saw George first. So George. You will see the document that we're talking about here is a very intense, detailed document. Yeah. And, it, it, and it shows uh, how much of the road should be paid. Yep. And then right. it'll, it'll add yeah. also, it like we've had many discussions with Matt and even with Heather, the laterals. If they're within 50 feet of each other, it's the whole road right. for that section of yeah. the 50 feet. Now, we'll use for Eastern Road, I mean, for Elm Street, for instance, uh, they did a terrible job patching. They didn't do none of the line cuts to make it right and all that. <clears throat> Heather, in her wisdom, negotiated, I think, a fee she mentioned of $45,000 for asphalt. She mentioned that a few times about Emmett Street, and I know Matt couldn't say where she got that figure. And we know that $45,000 is not even going to come close to, to do the repairs necessarily. But the problem, the biggest problem, is that a person could take this document. But if we don't have the enforcement of this document, I mean, how much, how much are you going to lay on You know, like you got somebody that's here in the intern, he's doing the engineering, and so get nobody to enforce it, number one, and to call out the NZPW to do the enforcement of, of all this work. Again, I'll use Everett Street. Everett Street did a terrible pass job. Go on South Street, they did a you know, fairly decent uh, patch up there. Uh, you go on every street, the sidewalks that they broke up, they filled with asphalt, they haven't repaired it yet, and National Nuco is notorious in the bylaw, that's this thing here, it says that if you uh, bust up a sidewalk, you have to do the full panel. Yeah. Well, yeah. they do what they broke. So, so now you got maybe a panel that's maybe five feet, that's got three cuts in it. And what happens? The panel fails over time. So the, this this piece of paper here does does what it's supposed to do, but we need to enforce it. And I think the only weak point about this is the fee schedule and the fines. I think if you build your fee schedule and fines and add it to this here, there's your document. There's your there's your bylaw if you want to call it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mike. Or were you just pointing out something? I was just pointing out what Jasmine wanted to talk okay. about. I don't know. Corey. Yeah, just to let you know, the state does get involved with um, specifically gas installation. Um, there is state uh, inspectors that do come around, and they do fine um, the big companies quite a bit of money for a simple thing as non-compaction or incorrect compaction or uh, a small thing as laying a tracer wire seven inches away from the pipe instead of six. Um, and those are significant fines, twenty-five, fifty, hundred thousand dollar fines, and those go to national grid or solar stores on behalf of the subcontractors. So there is state involvement in, in not necessarily reach out to, but they do come around to specific job sites on a daily basis from the, the state uh, right. and do inspections. It's not OSHA. Um, it's they, I believe in Massachusetts, but will would they be? Are they willing to 
help towns um, enforce bylaws and stuff like that? So no, you're going to have to enforce your own bylaws. Uh, yeah. Any any time I've ever dealt with um, the towns, the the DPW is the ones that come down, and they're the ones that are handling this. this That's is, what I it's on that. You can't have the police come and give you a fine for not opening the sidewalk correctly. Um, That's not how it works. Yeah. Um, you got to remember half the time you have police details on your job. True. And it's it's not their job to point out that you have three inches of concrete in your sidewalk and not five. Yeah. So it's not on them. It's on DPW uh, to enforce what needs to be done. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sounds like we have a lot of really, really good ideas, and it sounds like we have a DPW committee that can actually handle this. I, I, yeah. I praise this idea and concept, but I think it's a little chaotic having two subcommittees sit in the same room together trying to figure this out. I think it would be appropriate if the DPW wants to come up with the bylaw and set up the language with their expertise and then refer it to us for review to make sure it fits within the code of bylaws. I think that would be a more appropriate action because we're kind of just going around in circles. You've given a lot of good ideas, but I think that the DPW would be poised to actually take care of this better than a joint group of us. I think that makes sense, yeah. Um, I had Kevin. I just want to say I was the one who brought this up over 14 months ago. I've been talking about this, and I'm glad to see something happening about it. You know, we do have a problem with oversight and enforcement on this, uh, quite a few other things, but it is a good document to go by. But there needs to be something done because our roads are horrible. Mainly, Nuco's doing a number on it, but we let them do it, and we don't do anything about it. So I'm, I'm glad to see something's finally going to get done about this. I'd love to see, um, I'm, I don't know where this came from, from Killingly, but sort of like comparison or getting some other towns, because I do, I mean, I think this is a good foundation, the document that we have, but I mean, I just looked at the one um, that someone passed around, around the insurance prerequisites um, and the liability, including bodily injury. So I think there are looking at what is comparable in, in our area towns and kind of picking and choosing, you know, pieces that are going to um, create the most accountability um, for someone that does not only damage to the roads, but someone gets hurt, um, that they're liable for that and they take care of that. We want to protect our residents as well. Any other comments? So back in March, uh, and I've mentioned this at other DPW subcommittee meetings, back in March, I began redrafting all of the standard details uh, as a first step toward reworking the entire uh, uh, conditions on street opening permits. Mm -hmm. And um, and I probably, I'd say I got about two thirds of the way through the standard details before uh, Heather put in her notice and I have not had any time. I mean, I'd probably need a couple solid weeks of uh, of minimal interruption uh, in order to 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 complete the the, the standard details and the uh, and the and revisions to the uh, to the regulations. I assume that you need to be as far as yeah. Well, it, it it would kind of so I have it mostly a lot of the time would be finishing the standard details, but uh, then it'd be coming back and, and making the uh, the updating the regulations to match those details, and then kind of bouncing back and forth just a couple times to to QAQC them. But um, there's a lot of things in there that are kind of outdated and and do need to be updated. Like uh, I mean, you can still get type I one uh, mix. It's it's a recipe mix, but uh, but Mastop has moved away from recipe mixes in, in favor of job mixes, which is the super paved uh, paving. So things like that, uh, things like that would need to be updated. Uh, there's also things that aren't really completely clear, uh, such as the the thing with laterals uh, being 50 feet away from each other and needing to be joined. Mm -hmm. The the wording in there, I believe, says if you have two patches by the same utility within 50 feet of each other, they need to be incorporated into each other. Yeah. But if you look at a lateral patch here, and a lateral patch there, and the main patch there, it's all one patch. 
but, that's but they're not the joined. That's what the intent is. Yes. So we should clarify the language to match the intent. Uh, so if you can draw a line from, and I'm not sure exactly how to word this, but basically if you can draw a line from your patch to your patch, that whole line should be patched. Um, so uh, at, least within, at least within 50 feet or, so if or I whatever. So if I understand you properly and say we had a patch here and a patch on the other side of the room, you're, you're talking basically milling and re-overlaying everything from here to the end of the wall. Including whatever whatever's in the middle that may have been undisturbed paper. Right. So we all read. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I think that's what we all just an Yeah, and that's, that's just an example. Yeah. It's it would uh, maybe we can uh, put a uh, put a version of this together, and then once we have somebody who who uh, steps in and is in charge of enforcing it for a while, they'll see a bunch of the problems that I've seen. Um, in the wording and, the, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and yeah. that that need to be further clarified. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the whole point of having this conversation. People will see that's right. So. So my thing is, though, what you just said with lateral to lateral and main, that should be covered on number nine. And we don't nine. enforce number nine at all. Oh, that is one I yeah. And actually, I was actually I don't know that I that section. But we do. We do add additional provisions to those permits. That's why we get the eight foot wide mill and overlay. There's no such uh, thing in the. But in that's the what I'm saying. We should import number nine says it should go to the curb. Luco leaves a, a foot and a half to the mm -hmm. curb. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's asinine yeah. because then they don't come back and, and put a motion or anything down on the cracks. And then what happens? We get snow. Mm -hmm. You put ice melt down, it goes into the cracks and blows it out. Mm -hmm. You're creating that extra crack right there and setting them going the extra foot and a half right. to the curb. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is, is we got to start putting our teeth down into this and, and the oversight and enforcement. I mean, and I understand you're sure handed, right. but we haven't been doing this since Ronnie Trudeau left town. We haven't been doing anything. Again, our roads are horrible. We haven't been doing it since those. I've been here, and Ron Trudeau was here when I started. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we also haven't had enough staff to to properly uh, to properly watch over these, uh, and we've been getting less staff and less staff. Yeah. And in three weeks, you're gonna have less staff. Yeah. My other question. I don't know if you can answer. I don't know if you can answer it or the town manager is, but how much can we go after Nuco and um, the gas companies and stuff that they're the ones beating our roads up bad? I mean, how I know it's it's infrastructure and there's big stuff on infrastructure. You, you know, they can, I don't want to say do whatever they want, but how much can we push them to stop doing this the way we have it in our regulations? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think the first uh, place to start is. Um, when a DPW director is hired, you sit down with the town manager, the DPW director, any other stakeholders that want to be involved, and uh, and National Grid, and possibly their uh, subcontractors, or at least NUCO, uh, to just begin a discussion and, and really convey, and I mean, a couple months ago, I don't even remember what uh, what specific incident it was? Oh, it was them cutting. It, it was Nuco cutting into into the new pavement on South Street, uh, adjacent to Main Street. Um, I called up uh, Pete Mizuti and was very. I was, he's he's uh, our contact with uh, National Grid Gas, and I was very. I was. I, yeah, I was upset, and I made it very clear that I was upset, and I made it very clear that the entire. Town. Everybody that I've talked to is very upset with their performance in town, and he had no idea. He he was he or he either didn't understand uh, the how the town felt, or he was playing dumb about it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
Well, he means so I think that's the first guess. place to start is, yeah. is sit down at a table and discuss all of, this, all of these things and figure out what we need to do to, to get what we need from them and uh, and get their thoughts on, on those things as well. Thank you. That makes sense. Thank you. And another thing, uh, on average, uh, I own a three family. They came and run the gas pipe and removed the meter. I put it on a driveway and middle of the driveway on a window for the basement exit. And uh, we have no permit from the building uh, department to work on any inside houses. They went to the house with no permission. They run the new pipe, they did what I have to do, and they left. So when I went back there, actually, I got uh, the Board of Health and the building inspector involved at that time. Uh, they wasn't able to enforce anything on them. When I went back and talked to the National Grid, I said, I'm going to go to court. You're blocking the exit, and this is uh, not safe what you're doing. First of all, the meter in the middle of the driveway, any car will hit him. When I threatened him by the court, they went there and moved the meter and moved whatever they have to do. So either they're not pulling permit for the gas line inside the houses, so I don't know if they have the right to go in the people's houses and do any type of work without a permit from the town. If you count how many houses, that's like 100 bucks a permit. How many houses they going in? How many permits they should pull? <clears throat> so that's something else. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it's not included here, but that's something else we need to look to it too. So just to speak on that, um, the only times we've ever gone into um, houses were with police, and usually it was for a shut off if there was no access to a curb block. Um, you can do shutoffs right inside the house and lock the meters or disassemble the meters. So um, you, they don't do any kind of internal permits. That's on the homeowner's plumber. Um, gas company owns from the street to the meter. Anything after the meter is homeowners. Mm -hmm. So that's not on them. And they, they can run the, the service essentially wherever around the house they need to. Um, if it's in the right away of a, of a driveway within five feet of a driveway, it needs to have bollards put in place to protect the meter. And normally bollards are put in place thereafter, um, shortly thereafter the install or during the install. Yeah. Um, there's usually a time requirement on that. But as far as internal piping from the house, directly after that meter is on the homeowner. Okay. But all the meters are inside the houses now. So to be able to go inside and shut and remove them, mm -hmm. they go on in the houses, mm -hmm. and then fixing the pipe too. They're changing the plumber in the houses. It happened, you know, like they either show to uh, the building department. So it, it, they go in the people's houses and do a plumber with no permit. They're actually talking, uh, excuse me, they're actually doing tie ins to the meter, which is what they do. They tie into the meter on the homeowner's pipe. Anything after that, they should. I understand what you're saying, but they're doing it. They're going in and doing plumber in people's basement with no permit. Do they want to talk to the National Grid about that? Uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman, I think they'll be on yeah, the 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 No, I don't mind the conversation. I just think we should wrap it up now because we're not going to hmm. solve it tonight. I know some of the general government committees would like to solve uh, wrap this up. I think uh, Ms. Shea had her hand up, so if you want to give her a chance to talk to her. Just have a, an intersection that, if you'd like to see what what National Grid does in the 50-foot area, top of Dresser, where meets Sale Street, strobe over it. It's a quilt. It's a perfect quilt. There is there are patches on top of patches. They dig that up at least once a month. So if you want to practice on something. They have a regular regulator pit there that they've uh, excavated several times, and they're several. continuing to do. Yeah. And they're continuing to do work there, so we haven't uh, had a final discussion about the, the uh, final. They've been doing it for at least most of my life. But they used to have this green pipe that just vented gas. No, that was my childhood. I, I do admit that I wasn't, <laughs> but they've been digging at that same spot for a long time. Yeah, right, absolutely. So it's time to chat. <laughs> All right, well, okay. So do we have any, any specific comments? And then anybody have a chance to take some notes on these um, 
street opening permits and restrictions and other things that. I think Jackie was right. Refer yeah. back to DPW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Motion to refer. I'll refer back to DPW. Second. That's fine. There's a motion to refer. Second. Any comments or questions about the motion? All those in favor. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor. Thank you.